Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to my Premier League predictions for the 23-24 season. 20th position, unfortunately for you, I have got Sheffield United. Sorry any Sheffield United fans. The standout one for me was probably Triore. I just don't think it's going to be enough. Into 19th position, Luton. Luton could go either way for me. They could be a surprise. They might not be. They've signed to Heath Chong would be their standout for me personally. If he can hit the ground running in the Premier League, they've got a good chance. But it's a big if. My last place to go down, it's going to finally catch up with them. It is Everton. Their main sign in this summer that I have seen of note would be Danjuma on loan. I think Sean Dyche will give it a good go. I just They've been flirting with relegation for years and I think it's finally going to catch up with them and I think they will go down. 17th and 18th I think could flip either way. It might be a surprise to some people. I've gone Bournemouth. They've signed Cliver again if he can hit the ground run in the Premier League. I feel like they will be comfortably safe. If not, they could switch with Everton. If the thing I didn't like with Bournemouth, they sat their manager at the end of the season after keeping them safe. I think they could be in a lot of trouble this year. Wolves are in 16th. Signings for Wolves, best bit of transfer business they're probably going to do is whoever they sign Jimenez replacement. As it stands, that I know there was no signing done. In 15th, I have got newly promoted Burnley. Their key signing for me is Trafford. I think he's a fantastic young keeper. He really stood out for me in the Euro under 21s. I think Burnley should be safe. I'm excited actually to see Vincent Company play his style of football. They never seem to back down against anyone. So if he carries that on in the Premier League, they could be quite an exciting team to watch. Next up for me is Crystal Palace in 14. Now, I found this a weird one because obviously Zaha's gone. Roy Hodgson has come back in as manager. Their main signing of note for me would probably be Lerma. There's not really much there to be like, they're going to have a good season. They're going to be comfortably safe. It's who they bring in at the same time. Then who knows with Palace. In 13th, a little bit of a drop off from last season, but I think Fulham two reasons i think mitrovic will leave there's too much unrest with him at the club and i also think all the interest in their manager going to the saudi league could cause a few issues as far as i know he's committed to the club now key signing will be jimenez uh, i don't know that he's gonna get you the goals mitrovic would in 12 maybe a little bit generous but not in them for him. I feel like Nottingham Forest had a decent enough year last year. They stayed up. That was always the main goal. I think this season, all them players they brought in last season have had a year to gel together. They've brought in Anthony Alanga, would be their key signing for me. If he can hit the ground running in Forest, we know he's done some bits and pieces for Manchester United. In 11, I have gone probably quite generously at the minute for West Ham. The reason I say it's quite generous, they have not made a signing. They was linked with James Ward-Prowse, which has now fallen through. I still think they've got a quality in the squad to have a comfortable enough season they do still need to bring some players in with that being said but they've got the money to do so in 10th place is Brentford are potentially going to lose David Rea to Arsenal Flecken looks like an exciting young goalkeeper as well I think he'll slot right in at Brentford I think 10th for Brentford is still going to be a fairly good season for them in 9th and this might surprise a few people I've gone for Brighton only reason that I have put Brighton as low as 9th they formed so well. We have to raise the expectations slightly now for Brighton. They play a good, attractive style of football. They're not a team to mess around with. The only reason they're ninth for me is because they're in Europe this year. Their key signing for me would be probably De Hood. I think he could be a little hidden gem for them. In eighth, it is, of course, Spurs. Main signing for them at the minute is Madison, which I think is a good bit of business. That number 10 where Christian Eriksen used to play, they've just not had it since he's left. And I think Madison will kick them on in that sense. Kane goes, big question marks on where Spurs finish for me. Um, we all know what Kane is. He's a world-class striker. He will get you 20, 30 goals a season. In seventh, and I feel like I'm being quite generous based on how their transfer window is going, but I have got Chelsea. Key signing would be Unkunku. I mean, there hasn't really been anything else to shout about Pochettino. I think he will steer the club back in the right direction than what it was. But honestly, Chelsea, you need to start getting some signings through the door. You've lost Milne, Kante, quite a few players not really seeing the replacements. In six, we have got Aston Villa. Unai Emery came in last season and was absolutely fantastic. Pau Torres and Moussa Diaby would be the standout one for me. I feel like you might just offer a little bit more 
more than Leon Bailey did, to be honest with you. I think six as a minimum for Villa would be great. In fifth place, I have gone for Newcastle. Huge transfer to Nali from AC Milan. Sighting young midfielder could be very very good for them of course they're in the champions league which if you had said to a newcastle fan a few years ago when they were down in the championship you'll now be in the champions league and they wouldn't have believed you in fourth i have got my club manchester united i think onana will help us in the way we want to play i don't agree with the treatment of david de gea the change had to be made mason mount will be very good for us uh, on the counter-attack yeah i think we could be in for a good season hoyland it's a lot of money for a youngster we have not a lot of experience it's an unknown to a lot of us i think fourth and another trophy for them i would still see it as progress in third, I have got last year's runners-up in Arsenal. Key signing, Declan Rice. I think Arsenal have done some really good business this season. They've done it early, all fairness to them. They'll comfortably in the top four again. What Arteta has done there is he's really changed the um, narrative of that club. He's really turned it back round. I think he's proven them all wrong. Second, again, this could be generous. Liverpool, key signing for me is McAllister. If he can settle within Jurgen Klopp's system, it might help the likes of Slodge by you have got Premier League proven McAllister so if he can bring that into Liverpool squad I feel like they'll be okay and of course in first it is Kovacic Kovacic no it's not it's Man City whose key signing is Kovacic they've lost some big players this transfer window it's Man City they've got that squad where they can do that and still finish first they could do the treble again Haaland can he get anywhere near 50 goals again? Of course he can. I'm expecting somewhere 40 to 50, I think, for Erling Haaland. My surprise of the season team. I'm going to go Burnley. They've got that, the exciting young goalkeeper in Trafford. Exciting men during the way company plays football. Best transfer of the season. I'm actually going to give it to Tonali. I feel like even though there's high pressure on Tonali, he will do incredible things for Newcastle in that shirt. Golden boot, Jock Horror, Haaland. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please smash that thumbs up. Please do subscribe if you're new here. And I will see you all very soon. Peace.